I'm Rusty Komori, and this is Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. I was the head coach of the Punahou School Boys Varsity Tennis Team for 22 years, and we were fortunate to win 22 consecutive state championships. This show is based on my books, Beyond the Lines and Beyond the Game, and it's about inspiration, welcoming adversity, and building a superior culture of excellence. My special guest today is the assistant coordinator of our Missing Child Center in Hawaii and survivor of sex trafficking. She is Kalei Grant, and today we are going beyond crime prevention. Hey, Kalei, welcome to Beyond the Lines. Aloha, Rusty. Thank you for having me. Kalei, you have been making such a big impact here in Hawaii, but really around the world as well. But can I first ask you if you can share a bit about your background? Sure. So I'm a local girl born and raised here in Hawaii. I um, went to school here, college here. I um, continued on what I seem to have labeled myself as a typical local girl. Um, and before you know it, um, I started just continuing on. And, you know, really my story comes from a place of um, it started with a man that I met in a nightclub and he wasn't who he said he was. And that kind of changed my story um, from that point on. But as a Native Hawaiian um, survivor and leader of sex trafficking, it's so important to me and really have has become my life um, and commitment to making sure that no other person has to endure what I've overcome and really just paving the way for generations to come. Hale, I know it's going to be, I mean, you're so brave. You're so courageous. Um, can I, can I ask you if you can share that story about the lowest point that you experience in your life? Yes, sure. You know, as I shared, Rusty, I, I'm, I was a typical local girl, never really exposed to domestic violence, drug use. Um, I come from a working class family. I enjoyed, you know, playing soccer as a kid, just very, um, uh, I call it sheltered, um, sheltered life. So it wasn't until um, I met a man in a nightclub where my life turned. And he wasn't who he said he was. Um, after two weeks of dating and get to getting to know me as an, I was an adult at the time, um, he then drove me to a place downtown um, Honolulu that we is familiar to us all. And he said, this is the truth. I'm a pimp. I own an escort agency. And this is what you will do for me. And if you don't, I will kill you. I will kill your daughter, your family. By that time, he got to know everything about me, where I worked, where my daughter went to preschool. Um, and so he, he then had everything to hold against me. And at that point, remember, I was never exposed to that. So I was very shocked. The lowest point in my life was because that time from two weeks turned into two years of my life of trying to escape, trying to run away from him, trying to just be a mom, just be a daughter, just be a mother to my, my daughter. Um, the lowest point would be, I recall being in a room thinking, how did I end up here? How am I going to get away from this man? I felt that I hit rock bottom. I hit the lowest point of my life. I so much so that I couldn't see beyond my current situation. I felt trapped. I felt um, invisible. I felt like no one cared and no one would care, even if I tried to tell them what was happening. Hale, how old were you? You said you're an adult. How old were you? And then what specifically happened during those two weeks before he revealed that he was a pimp? So I was 25 at the time um, when we met. This was around the Pro Bowl, when Pro Bowl was very big here in Hawaii. 
there were a lot of events surrounding it. And I went to a club where there was a party and I met him as you would think normal adults would meet at events. Um, he portrayed that he was a normal guy. He, um, you know, said everything I wanted to hear in a sense um, to make himself seem normal. And so within the two week time period, he was very persistent about getting to know me, asking a lot of questions, taking me to breakfast, lunch, dinner, coffee, any excuse to um, see me, to get to know more about me. That's what would happen. And it seems genuine at the time. It, you know, I was very trusting, you know, I, I never, um, I never would have guessed, I never would imagine. And so before that reveal, as you can say, um, I was very, you know, I thought it was normal. So it wasn't until he drove me to what's called the track in downtown Honolulu. Um, most people know it as the Palilongs area. Everyone knows it so well, but a lot happens down there. And once he revealed to me that he's a pimp, he owns this escort agency and I will do what he says to do. And if I don't, he will, you know, hurt myself and um, my daughter and those closest to me. He then got out of the vehicle and uh, really walked out what he said he would. He started uh, violently hurting those women and girls he had out there on the track. And again, I was very shocked. I didn't know what to do. I've never seen anything like that in my life. He said, if I went to the police, he would kill me. He said, if I told anyone, he would hurt me, my family. So because day in and day out, now these threats became real to me. These threats, I started really believing that he's going to do what he said. And that's what put me in a place of fear that he really is going to kill me. He really is going to kill those that are close to me. And that's how quickly it turned into two years. But Rusty, every day, I really tried everything to get away from this man. You know, domestic violence is real. Sex assault, sex abuse is real. My life became, it became very common to be raped and abused in my life. And that's where it just kind of brought me to that lowest point. Like, how did I get here? How am I ever going to get away from this violence and this danger? And I never want my daughter, my family to be hurt. Um, so that was really um, my lowest point. I didn't know who to turn to, what step to take. Um, but it wasn't until 2010 in Miami, Florida at the Super Bowl. And that's where he flew. He flew all of us there. There were, there was myself and three other females at the time. One of which was um, under the age of eighteen. And at that time, there was a tip that was placed that activity was happening in this specific hotel, and that's where law enforcement came in. Once we were recovered, the pimp was detained. Um, and we were able to return back to Hawaii. And that's really the, the moment I really had to figure out, now what? What am I going to do? I had all these labels placed on me. You know, at that point, no one wanted anything to do with me because of the association. But they didn't understand the situation I was in. So it was from that point that I vowed to do everything I can to make a way for those in that situation. So they didn't have to go through what I went through, you know, and then to start that off, 2011 was the very first year. The first human trafficking law was passed that I was so honored to be a part of and testifying in front of legislature. So there were a lot of steps taken, but that was that breaking point that brought me to a place of um, just fully surrender and, and wondering, 
I don't understand and know how I'm going to get out, but I need to um, really figure it out. So it did help that that pimp was um, incarcerated. Eventually, he was convicted and sentenced to 22 years in federal prison. Ale, what was your recovery process like after you realized that you were finally free? It was tough. I'm not going to lie. Rusty, after you are so dehumanized, trying to recover from that is more than words could ever describe. Because I was a whole person. There is my spirit and soul. My soul is my mind, my will, my emotions. Everything needed to be restored. Everything was completely destroyed. I couldn't look up. I couldn't make eye contact with people. I didn't know who I was. I walked with a demeanor that was very hidden, like I was trying to hide myself in my own skin because that's how I was treated. That's how I was uh, dehumanized. And so to recover from that, when you, if you would have asked me this, when I was in that moment, I would have no idea. I couldn't see beyond my current situation. And, but what I did commit to was taking one step at a time. So for me, my number one step was my faith. It was going back to church, being surrounded with people that loved me and helped me take those steps. And as I continued on, step one step at a time, by the time I looked back, I was able to recognize how far I've come. And so I continued to take those steps till today. God is there. God is there, Calais. And um, I want to ask you, what was your mindset like? I mean, as you started to rebuild your life, I mean, can you share about how your mindset was? My mindset, whew, it was like never before. My thought process was completely destroyed. You know, when people use the term brainwashed, you know, I feel like they use it lightly because until you're there, you don't really understand what it's like. For example, one that endured such extreme domestic violence and sex abuse, sex assault, um, your mindset then becomes so um, closed down you know, you can't even see beyond what's in front of you, you know, because you have no hope. And that was me. I was, I couldn't function really normally. Um, doctors actually did tell me that I may not be able to walk and function and speak like a normal person ever again, because of the extreme violence The um, I was diagnosed with PTSD and TBI, which is um, traumatic brain injury because of all the abuse. And this is why my mindset was so, it, it couldn't even process things um, because I wasn't functioning on my own. I was told when to eat. I was told when I could use the bathroom. I was told these things. And so living day in and day out in that world, was very, it was very um, like I was in bondage. And so to really take the steps to heal, to recover, and then to rebuild, you know, it was a journey, but I'm so grateful. I'm so grateful because this is who I am today by the steps that I chose to make. And I'm continuing on strong. So, Kalei, you and coordinator Amanda Leonard, you both are the Missing Child Center of Hawaii. Can you share what you both do? Yes. So we are the Missing Child Center. We're housed in the Department of the Attorney General. And 
we are the state's clearinghouse for missing children. So that includes lost, injured, or missing. That includes parental abduction. And our most, the most volume of our cases will be endangered runaways. And that is youth who have left the guardian of uh, the home and care of their guardian. Um, this includes foster care. Um, and we are the Miley Amber Alert coordinators for the state of Hawaii. So our main function, our main role is to really support law enforcement in locating and recovering missing and exploited children. And Kale, you you do speakings throughout the world, is that true? Yes, yeah, so again, it's so humbling to be here and every speaking opportunity I have, because as I just shared, doctors and people told me that I would not be able to. So every day we're standing in victory. Um, I recently was able to go as Senator Maisie Hirono's guest to Washington, D.C. to attend the State of the Union address. Um, in addition to that, I'm able to speak to federal legislature, excuse me, federal legislatures people um, from all over the world that are in this movement to combat human trafficking. And it's so such a humbling experience, Rusty, to be able to now be such a vital part in this, I call it, uh, in this movement to combat human trafficking. Um, it's really an honor um, to be that voice for those who really feel that they don't have one, and also be the voice for those who have lost their lives um, as victims, which a lot have. And so also recently, um, I was able to share several years ago, my story that is housed in the Library of Congress there in Washington, DC. To leave that as a legacy for generations to come, not just about what happened, but how to be that message of hope and how that how someone can come from the bottom of their pit to even some of the highest moments in my life. And that's the kind of inspiration that I'd like to lead. Well, Kalei, you're definitely inspiring, I mean, countless people. And you mentioned your trip to Washington, D.C., um, you were there as Senator Maisie's special guest at the State of the Union for the president. I mean, what I mean, that was so good of her to have you as the guest. And I want to ask you, Kale, what um, what are some solutions to ultimately preventing uh, these sex trafficking crimes? Yes. So, Rusty, it was such an honor to be there as her guest. Um, I was able to meet with a lot of people um, for exactly that. How can we prevent human trafficking um, amongst um, Hawaii communities and beyond? And so the first step is education, bringing awareness to the issue, because we don't know what we don't know. So educating our community to identify what it is, what it looks like, and how we as a community uh, can respond to the issue of human trafficking. And Kale, what would be your advice to women and girls who feel trapped in their situation like, like you felt during a part of that time? That there is hope. You are not who they say you are. You are so valued and loved. The most courageous step you'll ever take is reaching out and asking for help. And I can't encourage you enough to take that step because there is so much life ahead of you um, that you deserve. And so thank you, Rusty, for allowing me to share that. I just really want to be that hope to those women and girls and individuals that feel entrapped in a life um, that they cannot get out of. Well, Kale, you, you know now that my books, and I want to talk with you a little bit about my books, um, that it 
It's helping people with mental health issues of depression and suicide. And in the books, I talk about choices. I talk about welcoming adversity, looking forward to challenges, uh, mindset, inspiration, hope. What are your thoughts about those, uh, those situations to help people? Well, mindset is such a big part of who you are. It is your mind, your will, your emotions. There's so many parts to a whole person. But the thoughts that you think have, has everything to do with who you are. So the more you surround yourself with people to uplift you, encourage you, that's life-giving. The more that we don't allow those things to uplift us, the more we surround ourselves with people that diminish or try to destroy us, our mindset then becomes that. But if we hold on to hope, if we hold on to what's ahead and the joy that's ahead of us, we can continue to make those strides to get there. You know, our choices um, dictate our destiny. You know, however, the past doesn't dictate our destiny. So it's from this moment forward. And I believe that wholeheartedly that as we take those steps uh, and we persevere, right? Because it's always a life full of taking steps and strides. We're able to build a resiliency like that we never knew we had. So mindset is such a big part of that, definitely. In addition to mindset, I... I often, in my executive coaching with so many CEOs or business owners, I really want people to focus on that one positive among 20 negatives. What are your thoughts about that? Absolutely. I believe, Rusty, that what you tolerate, you authorize to stay. So if you tolerate those thoughts of torment, for example, my situation, but anyone that has experienced anything, if you rehearse it and replay it in your mind, that is what you're creating. But if you focus on the things that are ahead of you and your purpose in life, your story shifts, your story changes. So focusing on the positive is everything because it will propel you forward. Now, Kalei, how how specifically... Are you and Amanda helping to build other people's lives once once they're, I mean, if they're sex trafficked or any other crimes like that, how are you helping others to rebuild their lives? Yes. Yeah, so we, our main role here with the attorney general's office is to really just support law enforcement to locate and recover missing and exploited children. However, it is my lifestyle, really. I've mentored many women and girls transitioning out of a life of sex trafficking. We also, in my role, we provide training uh, to law enforcement and agencies um, you know, uh, in the community uh, to educate them because awareness is important. Um, and really, we, we give hope. You know, To give hope to people um, is... Our, is purpose, you know, we're so grateful to do that by providing training to equip people to be um, strengthened in their response to recovering missing children and also those that are human trafficking victims. Being part of a solution is, is being part of something greater than yourself. And that's what um, I'm a part of. That's what the missing child is a part of. And we're so thankful. A few months ago, I featured Jessica Munoz from Ho'ola Napua. And do you do you work with Ho'ola Napua at all? I know of Ho'ola Napua. Um, I do know of them in our community um, and Pearl Haven there in the North Shore, which is great. Um, we also work with Susanna Wesley Community Center, which is currently in contract with the state. So we are grateful for agencies, organizations that are that do the work. So we're just so grateful. We need our community to come together so that we can move forward um, in unity uh, to prevent this from happening and help those who have gone through it. 
completely agree with you. And I went out there a few weeks ago to Pearl Haven to really see it. And oh, it's so impactful. And and the girls to meet some of the girls there. I mean, it's it's I mean, just hearing about it doesn't do it justice when you're able to see it and really meet them and see what you know, how they're rebuilding their lives. I mean, it's so powerful and words can't explain it. And there's there might be people um, around us that might I always say they might be suffering in silence or they might be bleeding in places that we can't see. What do you what do you um, what's your advice to, you know, the, the community to really bring awareness, like you said earlier? Really that, you know, it does happen here in our very own paradigm. And we all can do something about it. We can all be a part of a solution. And how you do that is if you see something, say something, make those reports, um, call it in. There is a child welfare, uh, child trafficking reporting hotline that is here on the screen below. That's 808-832-1999. And this is our state response to the issue of child sex trafficking. Um, and that number is to report any alleged situations of children being exploited and or trafficked. And so I encourage you to use that hotline. Um, that will help um, investigations start. Um, law enforcement can then go and look into those situations. So again, if you see something, say something and be a part with us of the solution. Halei, I want to ask you one more thing before we wrap up. Sure. What gives you fulfillment? It's really knowing that I'm walking in my purpose now. The choices that I make today dictate my destiny. So every single day I wake up, I get to, I get to do what I do today with the Department of the Attorney General and beyond. Making that global impact is my purpose. Because Resty, for anyone who has endured anything in their life, once you overcome it, that is your power. That is your power to continue to walk out in victory, knowing who you are today because of it. And so it fulfills me knowing that I get to be here because I know that I shouldn't be alive today, Rusty. And because I get to, that fulfills me. It empowers me. It, it really um, propels me to really continue that on. Well, Kale, I always say there's two types of people in the world. People that have a victim mindset and people that have a victor mindset. And you are so inspirational because you're one that has the victor mindset and you want to inspire everyone else in the world to have that same mindset. And I really want to thank you for taking time to be on the show today and to really share your story with everybody. Thank you so much for having me, Rusty. I really appreciate it. It's truly an honor. Thanks, Kalei. And thank you for watching Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. For more information, please visit RustyKomori.com. And my books are available on Amazon and Barnes & Noble. I hope that Kalei and I will inspire you to create your own superior culture of excellence and to find your greatness and help others find theirs. Aloha. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.